Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Let us discuss about myasthenia gravis today. It is a disorder of neuromuscular junction. There will be decreased number of acetylcholine receptors because the antibodies destroy the acetylcholine receptors there. So, there will be reduced transmission in the neuromuscular junction. It is an immune mediated disorder. We will see what are the antibodies. But some drugs like uh, uh, penicillamine can produce these antibodies. Some drugs like aminoglycoside, ciprofloxacin can aggravate the disease. This disease is more common in female patients than male. It is an autoimmune uh, mediated disease and many a times it is associated with thymoma. There are different types of antibodies can be produced here that we will see afterwards. But there are different types of uh, immune mediated disorders can be associated with myasthenia gravis or thymoma. In thymoma, thymic myoid cells, they are sparse muscle like cells in thymic medulla uh, which can trigger the immune response uh, uh, in myasthenia gravis. Many diseases can be associated with thymoma, myasthenia gravis, SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, CIDH, pernicious anemia, bullous pembigoid, dermatomyositis, th thyroiditis, scleroderma, Takayasu disease. Addison's graves like that different immune mediated uh, conditions can be associated with thymoma and that uh, mycin also can be associated. There are different antibodies can be produced in uh, the, this myasthenia gravis. Uh, there are uh, these antibodies are mainly acting against acetylcholine receptors. So, they can be picked up in the blood. Some antibodies like anti musk antibodies also can be. Uh, seen in many patients. Some patients we do not see any antibodies that uh, may not be we may not be able to pick up these antibodies or maybe some other different antibodies are present in their body. So, you can see in this picture you can see uh, normal uh, uh, neuromuscular junction the acetylcholine is produced in neuro, neuro, neuronal endings and receptors are there. Then this uh, neuromuscular junction the electricity will be passed to the uh, uh, nerve endings and uh, it will cause the neuromuscular junction. Whereas, in myasthenia gravis the receptors are blocked by these antibodies. So, there will not be any transmission patient develop muscle weakness. Now, the symptoms are very very typical patient have muscle weakness especially large muscles, neck muscles, thigh muscles, uh, respiratory muscles, uh, muscles of the bulbar area like uh, 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 larynx, pharynx and all. So, progressive weakness is the classical finding, fluctuating weakness. Morning there will not be any weakness, by evening they develop weakness. Repetitive movements produce weakness. So, that is a classical finding. Some patients can have bulbar myasthenia. That means, patient have no other weakness, but patient can have bilateral ptosis, ophthalmoplegia and all. Some patients will have only bulbar weakness, other muscle weakness will not be there. Some patients can have other muscle weakness or uh, other muscle weakness will be there, but bulbar weakness can be associated with that. That is also uh, seen in some patients. You can see here bilateral ptosis, the patient is trying to lift his uh, eyelids with uh, uh, his uh, uh, frontal muscles. So, the, there will be increased uh, uh, like uh, uh, power used in the frontal muscles. So, lot of wrinkles you can see on the frontal muscles. Now, other signs, uh, the most important sign will be uh, the bilateral ptosis. Some patients can have diplopia also depending on the difference in the weakness between two eyes. Uh, that is the muscle weakness is ocular muscle weakness. So, ocular muscles will be weak. So, patient will not be able to look sideways or upwards. Sometimes these weaknesses will be asymmetrical. So, patient develops diplopia or double vision. So, if the patient is having uh, ptosis and if you keep an ice pack for uh, 2 minutes, you can see the patient is improving in his symptoms. Uh, so, uh, this is only uh, uh, 2 to 5 minutes you have to keep the uh, uh, ice uh, packs. So, you can see transient improvement of the weakness. If you are seeing that, that is due to uh, the, uh, it is due to the acetylcholine stress uh, uh, breakdown will be reduced there and uh, uh, that will increase the function of the neuromuscular junction transiently. Most of the time, uh, these patients will have only uh, ptosis with uh, ophthalmoplegia. Uh, they never have uh, 
people are environment peoples are normal peoples are spared in this type of conditions some patients can have small people also but normally these people are normal so one of the most important and striking finding in myasthenia gravis is either patient present with ptosis or on examination uh, with uh, examination room you you ask to uh, ask the patient to try to look upwards you show your finger and ask the patient to look upwards you can see slowly the eyelids are falling down so that will be the most important finding and ophthalmoplegy also can be there you can ask uh, to follow your finger ask the patient to look at the finger up and down you can see patient will not be able to do that so the uh, inability to move the uh, eyelids are due to extraocular muscle weakness now if you find anybody who is having symptoms of myasthenia if you want to make a clinical diagnosis at bedside it is very easy you can give tenslone that's a short acting cholinesterase uh, uh, short acting anti cholinesterase drug so a small dose can be given initially if there is no adverse effects full dose can be given patient transiently improves so it's a short acting drug so patient transiently improve if the patient improves uh, with uh, this drug you can go for neostigmine or pyridoxine treatment but whenever we use this type of drugs the important side effect of this drug is bradycardia severe bradycardia so you have to be ready with atropine if the patient develops bradycardia give atropine some doctors prefer to give atropine as a pre treatment the same type of treatment is given for snake bite induced respiratory paralysis or snake bite induced ptosis uh, all these things we use uh, same drug this test is called as tenslone test then there is a classification for myasthenia that is ossermans classification class 1 ocular my, my, myasthenia ptosis with ophthalmoplegia ocular myasthenia with skeletal muscle weakness class 3 rapid progression of weakness myasthenic crisis class 4 late severe take 2 years to progress now there are some antibodies which can be tested in blood they are anti cholinesterase receptor antibodies seen in 80% of cases anti musk antibodies uh, that is seen in uh, 30 to 50% of the patients anti striated muscle antibodies around 36% of the patients you can see some patients we don't find any antibodies that condition is called as antibody negative myasthenia gravis now when we diagnose a case with myasthenia gravis with your clinical test or tenslone test you can go for two important uh, uh, neurophysiological studies that is single fiber electromyography you can see the jitters in that Uh, that is classical for myasthenia gravis and repetitive nerve stimulation produces decremental response that is very important that produces decremental response that means repetitive nerve stimulation initially the response will be good slowly the response will come down now we have already discussed that uh, discuss that uh, myasthenia gravis is mostly associated with thymic tumors so thymoma is classical you can take a chest x ray and ct scan so that will pick up thymoma to maximize the activity of acetylcholine that is inhibited you can use drugs like pyridoxine or neostigmine they are and acetylcholine trace inhibitors so uh, the dose of uh, pyridoxine will be 30 to 120 mg 6th hourly neostigmine 7.5 to 30 mg 6th hourly they can produce some muscarinic effects that we'll see afterwards that can be covered with glycopyrrolate propanthalin hyoscyamine so anti cholinesterase inhibitors retard the degradation of acetylcholine that occurs by enzymatic hydrolysis and the neuromuscular junction so as a result the acetylcholine is prolonged the effect of acetylcholine is prolonged so these drugs can be used in patients who is having myasthenia gravis but these drugs can have some side effects they are called as cholinergic crisis so same thing is same things you can observe in a patient who is having uh, who is having op poisoning or carbamate poisoning so you can remember uh, this uh, um uh, symptoms by a mnemonic that is um, uh, sludge or dumbbells 
diaphoresis, urination, meiosis, uh, bradycardia, bronchospasm, uh, excessive lacrimation, salivation. So all uh, secretions will increase and people will be uh, dilated, uh, sorry, people will be uh, constricted in this type of patients. So if you are suspecting uh, a cholinergic crisis, you can go for atropine or glycoperlite. So you can remember the mnemonic for uh, mascarinic signs that is cholinergic uh, crisis sludge or dumbbells. Now other investigations also other treatment also you have to give for this type of patients. Thymic surgery should be done if the patient is having th thymoma. Plasma exchange or plasma phoresis can remove the antibodies from blood. In emergency we can use it. IV Ig 2 gram per kg can be tried in patients who is having uh, acute myasthenic crisis where the plasma paresis is uh, uh, not available or contraindicated. Steroids is indicated during exacerbation of myasthenic symptoms. It is usually necessary to continue the treatment for longer period because this is an antibody mediated disorder. Pregnancy, prednisolone is the immuno, uh, immunosuppressant of choice in pregnancy. Other immunomodulators, they are or steroid sparing agents, azathioprine, mycophenolate, morphotil, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, all can be tried. Now the summary of uh, common treatment for myasthenia gravis, uh, you can use paridostigmine, uh, prednisolone, chronic immunotherapies like uh, pred, that is steroid, prednisolone, acetaprine, mycophenolate, morphetyl, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, uh, rapid treatment uh, in emergency room, plasma phoresis on IVIG, uh, surgery is uh, thymectomy only if there is a thymic tumor. Some drugs can exacerbate myasthenia gravis, so we have to be very careful. Aminoglycosides, quinolones, macrolides, beta blockers, quinine, magnesium, penicillamine. Magnesium is very very important because we use uh, magnesium sulfate uh, in uh, uh, pregnant ladies with uh, eclampsia. So myasthenia gravis with uh, eclampsia, we have to be very careful. We have to avoid magnesium sulfate, penicillamine. Uh, is another drug, uh, muscle relaxants like pancuronium, vecuronium, local anesthetics like xylokin, penicillamine, all should can be, uh, can, all can accelerate the disease, so avoid these drugs. So anesthesia part is very, very important uh, in my senior gravis uh, patients. Avoid use of neuromuscular blockage in this type of patients. If we are using it, uh, but uh, if uh, it is uh, it is emergency to use this type of drugs, reversal agents like sucuma drugs should be there. Uh, depolarizing uh, neuromuscular blocking agents. Patients with myasthenia are resistant to neuromuscular blockage with depolarizing agents like succinyl choline. Uh, Non-depolarizing agents. Myasthenia gravis are extremely sensitive to non-depolarizing agents like recuronium, vecuronium and all. So very small dose will be required. So we have to be very careful when we are intubating these type of patients. Lambert-Eaton syndrome is a myasthenia syndrome but the, the clinical findings will be exactly opposite of myasthenia gravis. This is classically seen, in, seen as a paraneoplastic syndrome. This is, it, this is in elderly individuals. The main tumor which can produce my uh, Eaton Lambert syndrome is lung malignancies. Here the problem is patient initially patient will have weakness then slowly patient improves with repetitive movements. I am not going to the details of this, this disease. This is also similar to myasthenia gravis only difference it, uh, is uh, repetitive movements improves the uh, weakness initially weakness will be there but mo mo moments increase the uh, sorry ing improve the weakness P initially weakness will be there then after repetitive movement patient improves most of these patients can have some malignancy especially lung malignancy so we have discussed about myasthenia gravis one of the important neuromuscular disorder patient present similar to uh, cobra bite or crate bite so uh, if there is a history of previous disease, then it can be diagnosed as uh, myasthenia gravis. But uh, when the patient acutely coming to emergency room, we have to always rule out snake bite. And when the patient come to emergency room with uh, um, uh, 
coming to emergency room with a history of myasthenia and on treatment we have to always suspect cholinergic crisis and that has to be differentiated from myasthenic crisis cholinergic crisis and myasthenic crisis there are some differentiating features so we have to be very careful when we are treating this type of cases thank you